astrophysics in 1988, where he's been working on uh, the equivalence pr principle and astronomical applications of ultra price laser metrology. He has uh, patent on his techniques for laser distance gauging and has authored 39 scientific papers. Uh, his hobbies include dinghy sailing, sa dinghy sailing, science presentations in school, and coaching and playing soccer. Mm -hmm. We uh, usually have a tradition at the end of the meeting of giving a little uh, um, token to our speakers, but I noticed the last few meetings that it, it, it appeared the token should be given more uh, at the beginning, so uh, we have our laser pointer. Oh, marvelous. So, thank you. <laughs> okay. I actually checked if you can just get it out of the box, the batteries are all charged Great. up and ready to go. <laughs> I'll tell you about the experiment we've been doing at the observatory. Yes, Mike, I think it would be a good idea if you do your slides because I want to stand over here so I don't get people's way. If I stand here, I'm probably blocking your view. Is that right? Yeah. Um, we, for, uh, for quite some time, uh, we've, been, we've been studying uh, at least, uh, an experiment to test the equivalence principle of gravity which is uh, a demanding experiment mechanically and, and um, optically, uh, although uh, it sprang from the idea we, we had the basic optical tool really in hand. Uh, my colleague uh, was, was taking a walk in the woods and realized that he used our, our laser distance gauge to measure the distance between two falling masses rather than measuring one falling mass and another one, uh, which you did a lot better. And you could measure the distance. You could form an optical cavity between two falling masses. And uh, so that's, that's how we got started. So uh, the next slide is the, the group of people working, working on this experiment uh, uh, with me. My colleague is Bob Riesenberg. And we've been fortunate to uh, discuss the experiment with and, and have substantial help and work from uh, many people over the years, some of whom are listed on the slide, and the rest are, are listed on our website, which is shown there. Uh, the, the equivalence principle says that um, two objects will fall at the same rate if they are acted on only by gravity, and not by gravity gradient, and not by air pressure or electric field or magnetic field or any of the other things that, that any of the other forces that, that can perturb their motion. Um, <coughs> and so as long as the objects are free of those other influences, they're small enough, um, they'll, they'll fall at the same rate. And this is a central postulate uh, for general relativity. If, if we were to show that there were a violation of the equivalence principle, then uh, general, general relativity would have to be rethought, redone. Um, we're in a, a rather fortunate position with, the, with this experiment because if we show that there is no violation with a really high accuracy space experiment, then we show that there's a problem with the theories that unify uh, gravity with the other forces of nature and, and, and make it a quantum theory. So it's, uh, it's an exciting experiment if we can get to that really, really excellent result. And it's hard to get to that result, as, a, as I'll explain. So this is, this is some of some of what we've been doing. Um, so, the, the, yeah, the next slide, please. Um, the, way the, the, the way the coolness principle has been tested uh, at present uh, is with a torsion uh, pendulum. Uh, the essential element of this apparatus cannot be seen uh, because it's far smaller than one pixel. It's a uh, torsion fiber up the middle here. Um, and this uh, pendulum hangs on that fiber, stretched to some decent fraction of its breaking strain. And masses of one type are placed on one side, and the other type are placed on the other side. And uh, the whole apparatus rotates uniformly, extremely smoothly on air bearings. It's a lovely apparatus. It's a very clever technique. It's extremely sensitive to exceedingly small forces. And um, the 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 test at present has reached the level of 4 by 10 to the minus 13 of gravity. And still, masses A and B, copper and aluminum, or whatever, whatever you test, fall at the same rate. Uh, this experiment is up against the limit of thermal noise in that torsion spring, which is connected to the pendulum. Um, and 
so this is this tells us that if we want to do a really really sensitive experiment, it's a good idea to not connect springs to our test masses. Uh, although that's a very wimpy spring. Um, so they're, they're up against the li limit set by thermal noise. So you can get a bit better. You can go to liquid helium temperature, where not only you get the factor of root root uh, 75 uh, from the, the square root of the temperature, but the materials get better as well. But you're not going to squeeze many orders of magnitude out of this experiment. Um, so we return to the idea of a Galilean test. <coughs> Reputed to have been done by Galileo. Uh, it probably wasn't. Um, the, what, what Galileo is, probably did was actually a more sensitive test with the technology of the day. He would roll cylinders down an inclined plane and listen for the clicks when they, they hit a brass strip that was, was put on the inclined plane. Uh, and by listening for the timing of those clicks, you had about the most sensitive timing measurement that you could make at the time. Uh, the the uh, torsion fiber experiments employ the components of gravity perpendicular to the fiber. Well, what are those? Right? The fiber hangs down. But it doesn't quite hang down. Because we are whirling around on the Earth at this latitude at 700 miles an hour, which causes the torsion fiber to experience a centrifugal force, or to require a centrifugal acceleration, if you like. And so it tilts slightly away from the direction of the Earth's gravity. Furthermore, the Earth is in orbit around other bodies, the Moon and the Sun in particular, also the center of the galaxy, which is an interesting source of a different kind of mass. Um, and it is in free fall in those orbits. And so those gravities orbit around the torsion fiber at their own angle. Um, and uh, both the suspension point of the fiber and the test mass of the pendulum are in free fall. And so it's as if you have this free piece of gravity going around at some rate, and all you have to do is look at your data, analyze it for a Fourier component at that rate, and uh, you, you'll have an effect on the torsion pendulum. However, the Galilean test is sensitive to the full gravity. Uh, things fall. That's a problem too, right? They hit the ground. But um, that's, that's the battle we fight, and the best way to do this is, is in free fall in a satellite. And uh, I have some ideas about ways, ways to get there from here. The Galilean test is the way to get there from here. You don't go to space and expect to improve by four or six orders of magnitude uh, with a spring connected to your uh, test mass. Next. This is the apparatus we're building in the lab. Um, and that's my colleague Riesenberg. This is a trick picture, actually, because it looks as if he's holding up that 80-pound mass with uh, a couple of fingers. But of course, what's actually happened is he, he's using just a, a couple of fingers to bounce it uh, on, a, on a cycling bouncer. And um, we've caught, caught the motion near the top. Next. Uh, our Galilean test, or a modern Galilean test, and, and, and this is the one that, that we're developing, um, employs a, uh, a bouncer which, uh, which recycles the apparatus um, uh, every every one and a quarter seconds. Uh, the apparatus is is confined to move on a vertical guideway, which at present is uh, tri uh, roller bearings, and will soon be replaced uh, by a much smoother system. Um, and a linear motor keeps the system running. The bouncer is there in order to re return the energy of the falling object. We start off five meters a second upwards. We throw the test masses upwards. They're, they're in free fall for uh, 0.9 seconds. They come down. And uh, the, the bouncer catches them. But now we're moving towards the floor at five meters a second, which also contains my delicate optics, which had to send a beam upwards into the experiment. And so uh, the bouncer quickly, but, but gently and firmly, turns the apparatus around and recycles it. The advantage of the recycling is several fold. For one thing, you don't need to buy a motor capable of submicron noise uh, and capable of 10 horsepower output. Um, for uh, for uh, another thing, you're not dissipating all that heat next to the precision apparatus. Um, and the recycling is rapid, so that um, the experiment keeps running uh, for an for, uh, extended period. Uh, 